Hello and uh, welcome back to the Extraordinary Variety channel. Um, it's been a good year and a half. Uh, YouTube took down our channel, but uh, I found a way. When there's a will, there's a way. We're back up and running. And as promised, uh, as of January 1st, 2019, here is part two. It took a little while of my favorite Proverbs uh, from the book of Proverbs. And uh, I'll probably read about three or four today. Give you my thoughts on that, uh, on them actually, and uh, uh, we'll take it from there. So I will go immediately into the book of Proverbs, and once again, this is the King James Version, and I'm going to start with Proverbs 20, verse 4, and the uh, verse says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. So once again, the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, he shall beg in harvest and have nothing. So the word sluggard um, in scripture would just refer to somebody who is lazy. So this, this, this verse uh, is, is talking about able-bodied people who are lazy, people who, who don't want to work when they're able to work. In fact, uh, uh, the same chapter in Proverbs uh, chapter 20, verse 13 says, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So once again, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. I think the Bible is clear in these two verses what we're talking about. It's, uh, it's talking about, uh, once again, people who are able-bodied but choose not to work. Um, everybody in life goes through tough times where they need uh, charity or they need uh, maybe even a handout uh, at times. But these are people who have truly fallen onto hard times. We are talking about people here, the sluggard a.k.a. the lazy man, uh, will not plow by the cold, therefore he shall beg and harvest. So maybe these are the types of individuals potentially relying on the government. Once again, I'm not picking on individuals, but these aren't people who habitually would rely on government assistance uh, who are able to work, we're talking about here. And once again, love not sleep. Saying it, it, we're, we're obviously, Scripture is not saying do not sleep. Love not sleep to, lest thou come to poverty. Love not sleep to the point where you're going to sleep in as opposed to keeping your responsibilities in the morning, especially if you're, you know, not especially. If you're an able-bodied individual after a certain age, you should be out working anyway. So Scripture here is being cleared, uh, clear here on uh, not being a sluggard and not being um, lazy uh, when you uh, should be working. Period. Uh, and uh, those two verses in Proverbs 20 uh, speak to me. Let's move on to a different proverb here. Uh, let me see. I've got a whole bunch written down. Um, we got straightforward ones that I don't really have to say much more. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Whoso keepeth his mouth and tongue keepeth, keepeth his soul from troubles. A lot of times in my life, any time I've, I've been in trouble, um, it's been because of my mouth, my big mouth. Uh, a lot of the times I, I, I say things out of turn where I don't think before I say. In fact, um, I have another verse here. Oh, right up there, uh, uh, Proverbs 29, verse 11. And it says this, and we're, we're, we're talking on the same vein here, of course. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth in until afterwards. So a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Like I said, I've been in so many times in my life in trouble for, you know, spouting off uh, when I shouldn't have, not thinking before I should speak. And this isn't just common sense advice. This is biblical advice. This is advice inspired by God, by God given to us to watch what you say. Be careful what you say. Don't let emotions dictate what you say and when you say it think. And I know a lot of quote unquote wise men have had this advice over the years, but like I said, uh, as scripture says here in the book of Proverbs early, God's knowledge is higher than our knowledge. And when God tells us to keep our yap shut, let's keep our yap shut. Proverbs 22, six says, train up a child in the way they, they, sorry, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
Two things I want to focus on. Number one is the word train. Train up a child. Train up a child. I'm under the firm belief that uh, scripture is is 100% accurate and I take literary, uh, literal sense from each word in scripture. So train up a child. Children need training. This is something in 2020 that people would frown upon. What are they, animals, dogs? No, they're not animals and dogs. They are children that need to be trained. So when you train up a child in the ways of uh, of manners, if you train up a child in, in the ways of discipline, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when he is old, he will not depart from it. It doesn't say here that you will not have trouble with your children when, in regards to behavior or discipline, etc. It says he will not depart from it. He will always know this teaching from his parents. So once again, parents, train up your children in the way they should go, and when they're older, they should not re uh, depart from it. This one's a kind of a funny one I used to laugh at, but it's so uh, it's so practical that it's bitten me. You'll see the pun. It's bitten me many times in life. Proverbs twenty six eleven says, "As a dog returneth to his vomit, a fool returneth to his folly. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly." We've we know in, in the canine world, the animal kingdom or, or, or whatever, forgive me if I don't have the terms right, a lot of the times you'll see a, 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 an animal vomit and then they'll go and eat the vomit. Obviously, this to us is, is dis disturbing and disgusting because I don't think there's a human being on the planet would do that. Well, maybe, I don't know. It, it, there could quite possibly be. But we as human beings find this to be disgusting and preposterous. But God is making an illustration here. As a dog returneth to his vomit, which we find disgusting, a fool returneth to his folly. It is a fool who returns to the same sin habitually over and over and over again. When we've been chastened by the Lord, when we've been corrected by the Lord, and His will is is put on our lives, you know, and it's and it's quite clear. Only a fool would return to that sin. Only a fool would return to that to that folly. Whether it's uh, in relation to any sin, lying, stealing, addiction, uh, um, uh, abuse. Once you're, you're told about that sin, you would only be a fool to continue to go back. Just like we are disgusted by the dog, the Lord is disgusted by us not repenting and, 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 and turning from our sin. There's a difference from being forgiven and repenting. Like The Lord has forgiven us for our sins, past, present, and future, when he died on the cross of Calvary. There's no doubt about that. But repentance, from what I've always been told in my life, is you're walking in a certain direction, sinning, and you are convicted of that sin, whether the Lord brings brings it to light or what, you're convicted of that sin, you stop and then you turn around and repent. And you don't continue with the sin. Just like Jesus said to, uh, at, at, to the woman at the well, go and sin no more. Jesus uh, didn't, didn't ch chastise her publicly for having, I believe, the five husbands and the new man she was with now, so six lifelong partners. And Jesus just told her, I do not condemn thee, but go and sin no more. That's repentance. That's not returning to your vomit. That's what scripture is telling us there. Um, let me see if I could squeak one more in there. Okay, 28.7. Proverbs 28.7. Whosoever keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Whosoever keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Do you think that sin only affects you? Do you think that your sin doesn't affect your family? Take it from individuals like me who've, who've been through the ringer and who have drugged people through my transgressions. Sin doesn't just affect you, especially if you're a married individual, a married, a married uh, husband, wife, uh, father, mother. Sin affects your whole family. Do not kid yourself. Sin affects your whole family. And in fact, even if you're not married, sin affects your parents. It's embarrassing. It brings shame upon your family. This isn't about a pride thing like the, the family name. Why would you want to do that? Listen, we are all going to make mistakes. We're all fallen. We're all sinners. But this verse points out to us, if we keep the law, we're wise sons. People who are companions of fools and riotous men bring shame to your father. So sin is not only effective, 
affects you personally, which is, 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 is a tragedy alone, but it affects those loved ones around you, your sons, your daughters, your, your, your grandparents. It affects the whole family. Sin is cancer. Sin gets into you and, and spreads. So once again, this is uh, Ryan. I'm back from the... <laughs> very blessed to be back in the Extraordinary Variety channel. And uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, we have a variety of contact. But uh, once again, it's good to be back. And uh, God bless you.